Hey, Tony from Bike Bear here. It's good to see you. Today, what we're going to talk about is best motorized bike parts. These are parts that I've had experience with, that I see others have experience with. So I put them into a few categories, really just like ones that you should buy first, you know, when you're just starting out, what should you improve from a basic kit, things like that. Uh, the next one's best bang for your buck, like literally what are good parts that I'm like, man, this thing just is so worth it, <laughs> right? Uh, the next one would be speed and performance. You know, as you get into like wanting to make things more high performance, what what is the parts that will give you that those results, right? Um, the next one, the last one would be uh, reliability for like commuter bikes and things like that. Like now that I built a couple that I just we just ride kind of casual. Uh, there's definitely some parts that are more suited for commuter bikes than others. So. Let's dive right into it. As far as parts that you should buy first, we all know what this is, the rag joint, right? It's the one that comes with your kit. And it's it's fine. A lot of people have used them with great success. I think some people are like, no, been fine. Been fine for a long time. But when I first got in this game, I was like, ah, I just could see a lot of problems with that, trying to line it up and everything. So one of the first parts you should get instead of using this contraption is a CNC sprocket adapter and an upgraded sprocket. Let's check it out. As you can see on the F0, I have a sprocket adapter and an aluminum CNC sprocket. These are just so nice because you're not relying on clamping on your spokes to get the wheel to rotate. It's literally clamped to the hub, so all of your force, just like this sprocket, is spinning the hub. Once you get it seated on here, and we've done plenty of videos on it, you can go check those out on, on how I get them to you know clamp on there tight. Um, once it's on there, you, you don't have to worry about it. So definitely a first part that you should get. All right, next up is the aluminum throttle grip. This is something that I love the look of over the plastic one you know this one i didn't even put a grip on i just wrapped it with a fabric tape and it's held up really well uh, i do grease the inside of here it's just smooth it works looks better than the plastic one definitely recommend getting this next up on the parts that i recommend buying first is improve your chain tensioner i love the arched ones like this because uh, it's just got a lot of travel and I can kind of do anything I want with it. So when I'm kind of messing around and trying to modify things and play around like we all do, I can put the wheel anywhere I want and just, you know, have fun with it. But the main reason is, is it's rock solid. Yeah, if you check out that video um, that I did a while back where I tested all of them, you may like one of those better. Uh, and that's fine. Definitely get an upgraded chain tensioner. I recommend this one because... It's so versatile. So next up is one of the most important things that you should buy first. If you look on the back of that wheel, what do you see? A big old disc with a big old brake on it. Stopping power is the most important thing on these bikes. I mean, you're putting an engine on it and you're gonna start running around on a bicycle. You need to have stopping power. Now I've used caliper ones like this with great success where they grab the rim uh, you can use these on the front or back. So depending on what kind of bike you have, you know, cruiser bike, it, these fit the best on. But you definitely need good brakes. So that's something that I would definitely buy first. You know, the other option is, is just what I showed you is the disc brake kit. You can see that we have those on the site also. And that's what's so good about a bike like the F-Zero is it comes with the disc brake standard on the whole bike, front and rear. Nothing better. Which brings us to our last part, the dual pull brake lever. So this hooks two cables in, so your front and your rear can go to this one lever. Now, I use it upside down, that's why you see this, because I put it on the uh, left side of the handlebars. Um, but it's been fantastic. I have it on several bikes. It takes the pain out of having you know brake levers on both sides. You just need one brake lever to do all your stopping for you. And it it's actually works i guess for those who may be thinking that uh well yeah but how does it line up is it hard to uh, set up and get adjusted it actually isn't i've had disc brakes like this bike has disc brakes front and rear uh, but i've had caliper brake and a disc brake and it's 
handled it well. Like it was really easy to set up. Definitely a must have part that you should buy first. So next up is best bang for your buck category. Now this one kind of had me thinking quite a bit. And the reason is, is like, man, what's, what is the parts that I went, whoa, so worth the money, right? I had to think for a bit because there's kind of a bunch of them. <laughs> uh, but there's ones that really stand out. And the first one is this little CNC intake. These little short stubby guys helps fit, you know, engines like this against the frame of like the F-Zero. Uh, but man, this little intake it has a, a gasket, you know, a little O-ring on here. So they're just awesome. <laughs> Best bang for the buck because it just prevents all air, you know, leaks. It's just solid and it's they're relatively inexpensive. Totally worth it. So aluminum intake, definitely a best bang for your buck. Now you're probably going to call me crazy for this one, but the flexible muffler, I would say is the best bang for your buck. It gives a decent amount of performance and it's quiet. So when I saw the, uh, exhaust video that bikeberry put out several years ago it said that this was like in second place right behind the expansion chamber and so i that's the one i ordered for my first kit you know and i'm telling you bang for your buck it's easy to put on it's flexible it's you know when you're mounting it on there it you don't have to like modify it at all or anything you just because it's flexible. <laughs> uh, so I would say the Flex Fit uh, Poo Poo Muffler is definitely best bang for your buck. Next up on the list is NGK Spark Plugs. They're definitely a good bang for the buck. You know, they have several different models and styles that give different performance. You can see the different numbers here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. So it's something that I would get a handful of them and just start testing them out and see what you like. But they're definitely proven workhorses, bang for your buck, performance part. Can't go wrong with an NGK. Up on my list of bang for your buck parts is a copper head gasket. Now, a lot of kits come with aluminum ones. I know ours come with copper ones. That's where this came from. Uh, but if you don't have copper head gaskets, get them. It's the best bang for your buck. Like they're just <laughs> they don't leak. They're just man. They just perform so well and are so worth it. Uh, you shouldn't even be thinking of aluminum. They work so well because they're harder than aluminum, but still have malleable softness to them. So uh, they just work so well, and they work really well when paired with you know these aluminum heads. So when you talk about it sealing against here, it's just works they're so awesome well copper head gaskets bring us right into our next contestant cnc heads in the recent video that i did where i checked the temperature uh you know compression values all the stuff that these things provide and they say they provide we have all that data and numbers so you can go check that video out uh, but there's a reason why this is i would say the standard so it's the one you see everywhere uh, it performs it so well, it cools well, it seals well, it just does everything right. So it's definitely a best bang for your buck. And when you want order the Stage 4 kit, you get it with it. So it's a good deal. So another thing that I would put in the category of best bang for your buck is jet sphere carburetor. So these are for the HP carb. There's different threads for uh, the NT card now because they changed it a while back. So I'll get some of those and we'll go through that sometime. That's something that I have in the works. But uh, for now, I would say definitely jets because you can fine tune the performance of your carburetor. So package of them is not very much and it's a good bang for your buck because you really can fine tune your carburetor for optimum performance and idling. <laughs> I know, I know, you're probably saying, Tony, you just showed us this brake lever, but I'm gonna put it in the category of best bang for your buck because they're not very much. They're just under $20, I think, for a dual brake lever. 
and it has saved me so much headache in trying to uh, have a clean layout on my handlebars and control bro both brakes at once. I love this thing. All right, so here's kind of a strange one that I feel is the best bang for your buck is the bipod kickstand. I love it because you can mount it on the bike and you know lift the rear wheel off and you can just rock forward and pop it up and you're good to go versus taking your foot on a regular one and kicking it up like this one still has the f0 has a regular one which it's a good kickstand it totally works fine i'm happy with it but i do get tired of kicking it up every time i go to ride where this one when it's on the bike you can rock it forward and take off so i really dig these <laughs> all right let's talk about speed and performance that's really what this bike is going to be about is testing all our performance parts so i'm kind of making it fun right uh, but the thing here is there's reliability parts that you need in place before you go crazy and buy a bunch of uh, high performance parts and really soup up that engine let's go through what those are so when you're talking about speed and performance, I think it's all in the rims is the starting point. Good quality rims with heavy gauge spokes and a way that you can bolt on your sprocket and or your disc brake, I think is of utmost importance. Like when I've had regular wheels and rims, they just wobbled <laughs> when I rode, like they felt unstable. So you want a heavy duty, you know, thick spoked rim that can handle the flex and all of the transmission of the power that you're gonna be adding to your engine so that you have a smooth, safe ride and you'll be able to reach your speeds efficiently. If you look at, you know, the front rim here, it just handles everything really well. Like I don't have any trouble with these. You'll have to go in, uh, and make sure they're true and double check them and everything. But I'm so confident because I have good front and rear brakes and solid rims as a foundation uh, to riding. So no doubt about it. The first thing you should do for performance is get heavy duty rims. Next up is uh, for the transmission of power is a hardened chain. The one that comes with your kit is fine. I've had some run for years, but if you're gonna start adding more power to your engine than what it is stock, you better get a hardened chain. Then you won't have all the trouble of stretching and everything like you would with a basic chain. I know I showed this earlier in the video, but it's worth saying again, an aluminum intake is super valuable, especially when you're going for performance because it has a gasket on it that will help prevent air leaks, which is such a common problem and a reason for lower performance. You're nipping it in the bud by getting a high quality aluminum intake that seals properly against your carburetor. So definitely a first place to start for performance. Up again is the CNC head. You just need one. There's still times I see people running around with uh, you know, the cast head that comes with your kit. Now you need to ditch that <laughs> and get one of these because the cooling capacity is so much better. And if you're gonna start uh, increasing the power of your engine, you definitely need that heat to go somewhere and you want it to get out of the engine as fast as possible. And that's what's so good about these. So once you've solved the problem of having better, you know, heavier wheels and a better chain and, you know, a better head that can handle the heat, that's when you start thinking about an expansion chamber. So expansion chamber, you've seen there's videos on there. We'll do some updated ones on them, uh, but it just helps the engine breathe better, work better. There's a back pressure to it. Uh, man, you'll, you'll notice a difference right away as soon as you bolt one of these on. The best way to explain it is like, as you know, it's doing its thing and the engine is pumping away and the exhaust is going out, but it's some back pressure. It's almost like it breathes new life into an engine and you just notice like a lift, you know, and an acceleration that's different. And uh, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, you know it. So I definitely get the deluxe expansion chamber. 
Next up is, if you notice my theme of, uh, I think we all love the CNC stuff, <laughs> all the aluminum, you know, brackets and things like that. But there's a reason for it because there's a stability that comes with them when you're going for performance that you just need the rock solid alignment and strength that these parts have. Uh, there's less bolts and all that than there is with the U-bolt adapter. But I would say that the you know CNC engine mount is definitely a high performance part that's going to keep everything together efficiently as you increase the power of your engine. So those are the things that are the starting point to speed and performance of an engine and a bike because you need that stable platform to then add more power to the engine so that it's transmitted properly because really a lot of speed and performance once you get a few basic parts on there and you know expansion chamber fine tune your carburetor you know those kind of things it really comes down to porting and and making modifications to the engine and cleaning it up really you know the interior of it so it has the correct flow in and out uh that's where real um speed and performance starts to come in at so now let's touch on commuter bikes, things that you want reliable. What does that look like? What kind of parts do you need for that? I'm gonna recommend whole engines here for the beginning of this because I feel like the BT80, which is the electric start, is a really good rock solid engine for that option. I also feel like four strokes definitely win this category from the droves of people who say, yeah, four stroke, all right because the way it cools, you know, just the way it functions, uh, it's a lot more reliable than any two stroke is. I would say that the BT80 comes in right there. Uh, but those are your two options as far as engines. Once you figured out the engine that you want, I would say that wheels are your next thing that you need to make sure are good. So the heavy duty HD rims that once you get them dialed in, they're not gonna fail you. They're gonna ride consistently and stress-free, just like the uh, F-Zero. I've been riding it a ton for months now, and the wheels are just, they're just fine. And also the these tires, there's, I have heavy duty inner tubes in there. That's a really important one because you don't want flats all the time, right? So if you want reliability, heavy duty inner tubes are definitely a must. Performance and reliability, looking at your chain, one thing is you can do is, this isn't a part suggestion, this is actually a, a removal suggestion, is to not have a chain tensioner on this chain. Completely taking it off and just running just a chain by itself. When you take parts out of the equation, you take potential problems out of the equation. So that's something to think about. Now keep in mind, you remove the chain tensioner, you need this guy to be solid, so no rag joints here, okay? Uh, I definitely an aluminum sprocket with an adapter or the sprocket mounted directly to the hub. Here's kind of a small thing, upgrading your fuel line. That's a really good thing if you want reliability for your commuter bike or any of them actually. Uh, it doesn't harden up over time like the one that comes with the kit and it's just like this has been on there a long time and it's still pliable and still the same as when i first put it on so that's a, a very much a uh, headache saver buying good fuel line well i hope that helps you me walking through some of the best motorized bike parts available there's a lot of these things that are foundational and i really tried to stress that there's foundational things that you need to do before you you know, do high performance things or you want, uh, you know, a really reliable commuter bike or, you know, what's the best bang for the buck, <laughs> you know, that all that kind of stuff. Time and time again, these parts have proven themselves to be worth it and worthwhile ways to think about your ride and implementing these things. So, I mean, right down to heavy duty inner tubes, right? Like that would apply to all of them. It's best bang for the buck. It's great for performance, it's reliable. I, it's just a foundational principle. So uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are and for what you write and what you found to fit in these categories.
Because I would love to hear what the community has to say about, you know, performance. Like, man, what, do you, what have you found to be utmost importance for performance? What have you found that has been rock solid and reliable for a commuter bike? What's been the best bang for your buck, right? Uh, right down to what things should you buy first when you buy a brand new engine kit? What should you buy first? So... I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please comment below, like the, you know, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I love being here and I love seeing you here. Uh, learning together, this community is amazing. Uh, take this wisdom and run with it. Let's roll.